Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 62. It's on reversible reactions. Most of the reactions we're familiar with, like the explosion of fireworks, goes from reactants to products. In other words, that gunpowder and the binder and the metals are converted into products, but it doesn't go back to being fireworks again. Or if we burn wood, we're converting that into products, carbon dioxide, water, we're releasing a lot of that energy as light and heat, but it doesn't go back to being reactants again. And so it took chemists a long time to identify the reversible reaction. It was first identified by Claude Berthollet, and what he was doing was looking at some lakes in Egypt, and he found something that normally is a reactant. He found some sodium carbonate. He knew that sodium carbonate and calcium chloride would combine to form salt and calcium carbonate, which is essentially limestone. But he didn't know that the reverse occurred. And so he found different levels of this and identified it as a reversible reaction. And we use an arrow that goes both directions to show that the reactants are being converted to products and the products back to reactants again. And so reactions can either be irreversible or reversible. In an irreversible reaction, the arrow goes from left to right, reactants become products, but in a reversible one, reactants become products, products become reactants, and eventually hit something called an equilibrium state, where even though reactants are becoming products and products reactants, the, the sum amount is not changing. And so some examples I'll talk about are going to be physical. For example, when you evaporate water and then it condenses again, that's a reversible reaction. Or when you dissolve salt in water, remove the water, and it's salt again, that'd be a chemical reversible reaction. They're incredibly important in biology, so smell, for example, is a reversible reaction where molecules in the air are binding to olfactory receptors in your nose and then they'll let go again. Or environmentally, as carbon moves from life to soil to atmosphere, that's going to be a reversible reaction as well. And so I want to start with a model. This is a PHET model. It's not a, a reversible reaction per se, but it shows how they work. And so on the left side, we've got some molecules. We'll call those A, and we'll color them green. And they're just going to randomly bounce around. When they move to the right side, they're going to become red, and we'll call those products. And you can see, as long as the level is the same, we have about the same amount. But as I move it down on the right side, now there's more potential energy over there, and so it's moving from the left side to the right side. Now we have more products than we do reactants, but it goes both ways. Or if we move it down on the left side, now we're starting to get more reactants than products. Molecules are moving back and forth. It eventually stabilizes or it reaches an equilibrium state. And so a way to think about this, another analogy, is to think about it as a dance. Imagine that we have a dance. And the females and males before the dance are going to be like reactants. And as they choose partners, they're becoming products. But each time the song changes, they may switch to a different partner. And so as they do that, we're mixing reactants are becoming products, but sometimes those products are becoming reactants. And so if we label them, everybody before they started coupling up is a reactant. Everybody after, it's going to be a product. But it doesn't just stay that way. It can reverse again. And so if I were to write this as an equation, we'd have our reactants on the left side, and then this double arrow means they can become products, but those products just as likely can become reactants again. Now again, let's, let's add a real chemical reaction here. Now we've got nitrogen dioxide which is forming this kind of a dance where it's forming together to make a product called dinitrogen tetraoxide. And so we can get the movement of this nitrogen dioxide into this product. The product can go back to becoming reactants again. So we would write the equation like this. We have simply two moles of this gas on the left side, one mole on the right side. And so let me give you some examples of this. A physical example of a reversible reaction could be evaporation of water. When we heat it up, we're breaking those hydrogen bonds and it's moving from a liquid to a gas. But if we cool it down, then we're simply going to have condensation again. So we've reversed that physical reaction. Or chemically, if we take salt and dissolve it in water, so if we add sodium chloride to water, what's going to happen to it? It's going to dissolve. And that's because the water molecules are ushering these ions of sodium and chloride away from each other. But if we remove that water, what's going to happen? We're going to precipitate that salt and it's going to come back again. In biology, it's incredibly important. So how do you smell? There are molecules out in the air, and as you smell, those move up into your nose. And at the top of your nose up here, you have this olfactory bulb. If we were to zoom into that a little bit, what happens is you have all of these modified neurons, we call those olfactory neurons, that are just waiting to receive a molecule. And as those molecules chemically bind to that olfactory sensor, you sense smell. That neural 
impulse is going to go to your brain and you can smell it. But if it didn't unbind, you would just have that same smell forever. So it's important that this is a reversible reaction. Environmentally as well, where's most of the carbon on our planet? It's actually locked in the soil. Um, but we can release that into the atmosphere through respiration and we can move it back into living material through photosynthesis. And so carbon is incredibly important. Levels of carbon in the atmosphere are really important, but it's a reversible environmental reaction. And so did you learn to construct an explanation based on observations of different reversible processes? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful. <laughs>